Okay, let's get started. Hello, everyone. Thank you very much for joining us for today's CNCF webinar, How to Migrate NF or VNF to CNF Without Vendor Lock-In. I am Jerry Fallon, and I will be moderating today's webinar. We would like to welcome our presenters today, Greg Sikora, VP of Business Development at OVO, Rafal Misalik, Software Engineer at OVO, and Powell Kulpa, Software Engineer at OVO. Just a few housekeeping items before we get started. During the webinar, you are not able to talk as an attendee. There is a Q&A box at the bottom of your screen, so please feel free to drop your questions in there, and we'll get to as many as we can at the end. This is an official webinar of the CNCF and as such is subject to the CNCF Code of Conduct. Please do not add anything to the chat or questions that are in violation of the Code of Conduct. Please be respectful of your fellow participants and presenters. Please also note that the recording and slides will be posted later today to the CNCF webinar page at cncf.io slash webinars. And with that, I will hand it over to our presenters for today's presentation. Okay, thanks, Jerry. Yeah. So, um, my name is Greg Sikora. I will be uh, going through this presentation to, uh, today with Rafał and, and Paweł. And uh, today we're going to talk about uh, migration of network function to uh, cloud native function without vendor lock-in. How does it work? Uh, so we will see. So our speakers, as mentioned, the, Greg Shikora, myself, uh, I am an open source evangelist in Telco world. Uh, so I was personally re responsible for introdu introduction of open source based platforms in, uh, in the oper uh, operator environment. Uh, privately, I am ultra, ultra marathon runner and uh, I am telecom and cloud expert with 20 plus years experience and blockchain addicted enthusiast. Rafał Myśliwiec uh, is our Swiss knife of messaging experience in software engineering, uh, expert in legacy protocols migration. And Paweł Kulpa is responsible here uh, uh, for cloud cloudification and he's master chef of cloudification. What we do best uh, as we do cloud, as you see, we, are, we, are, we know how to do cloud with OpenStack, Kubernetes, Ansible, Chef, Terraform, and so on and so on. Uh, company was settled down in 2012, and uh, since the beginning, we were focused at Telco. So Telco is our domain, and we do the best uh, Telco, and we have few products here, are some examples of our products. Uh, on top of that, we, we do other uh, services like uh, development and uh, consulting in blockchain, artificial intelligence, uh, machine learning, uh, data mining, uh, and so on. We love open source. Uh, as used to say our CEO, Dominic, uh, we love open source because it gives us the freedom to cook delicious dishes using best ingredients. It's quite easy to find uh, projects, open source projects, which fulfill your needs. But the most important is to, to know how to uh, connect them together and use them uh, to provide a solution, which is either career grade or telco grade uh, and can provide uh, SLA. And we have this experience. We did. Uh, more than 15 big migrations uh, which were using open source projects. Uh, our open source based solution uh, is handling uh, more than 30 million SMS per day, um, which is rated in online. And, uh, and uh, we are handling more than 150 million uh, users on open source. But we've, before we move forward, I'd like to tell you what are market and technology drivers uh, which uh, push us into this direction. Definitely smart, smart everything. 5G is not just next G, it's, it's a completely different, uh, mm, it's new 
provides us new demands. We can work and play in the, in the cloud. Uh, we have huge demands for data, giga, giga, gigabits in a second, augmented reality, virtual reality, new use cases like uh, vi vehicle to vehicle communication, which require uh, extremely low latency. On the other hand, we have a lot of uh, devices, IoT devices, which communicate uh, between each other, uh, sending small portion of data. And uh, we have home customers who, who are using uh, huge uh, pipes for uh, ultra HD video and so on, on or online uh, gaming. So as you see, you are not able to fulfill those demands using one pattern. That's why you have to be flexible and provide a technology which fulfills, uh, which is ready for, for different use cases. Uh, as you see, uh, we see some uh, path between network functions and cloud native functions. And this is kind of the evolution to the cloud. Before uh, 15, 2015, uh, most of uh, services application were, were deployed as a native uh, network functions, which is which were usually de deployed as a, a solution uh, placed on bare metal in the uh, service provider data center. Then uh, we had hype of uh, NFV and most of uh, those legacy solution were somehow migrated to VNF, virtual network, network function, but it wasn't disruptive. It was just uh, squeezing and fitting the legacy solution uh, to virtualized solution. The cloud native functions, it's completely different story. The solution has to be redesigned to be able to work in such environment. And nowadays we have some kind of hybrid deployments because we have to fulfill re, uh, requirements of legacy uh, services and legacy protocols. In the future, uh, everything will be purely cloud using RESTful uh, API to communicate each other. And how to do this evolution? Uh, so we have to focus on, at different areas. I, I mentioned here a few of them, like development process. Definitely you are not able to do that in a, a traditional waterfall. You have to be DevOps and uh, do this kind of continuous integration, continuous uh, delivery process. Application uh, has to be uh, migrated from monolithic to microservices, it has to be cut uh, uh, to small, smaller portions. And th those smaller portions, uh, microservices, has to be containerized to be ready to cloud. And this is more or less how we see this evolution. At following slides, we're going to show how to do that step, step by step. Mm. And based on this slide, we we figure out and we worked out uh, our architecture blueprint uh, for uh, for for such kind of services which can be deployed either in a, a service provider uh, backend data center or at edge uh, and here we have the architecture blueprint and i'd like to mention here one important point uh, but previously here, as I mentioned, service providers, sorry, uh, network equipment providers who would wanted to do migration from network function to virtual network function, they, they just migrated service as such. Migration to cloud native function require redesign and uh, shifting part of functionality, part of the service to open source projects. And, and here we are showing how to do that. For the high availability, for uh, automa automatic deployment, we are using such uh, solutions products like Ansible, Terraform, uh, Docker, Kubernetes, Chef. Uh, so we can uh, use them to, to do 
automatic deployment on uh, infrastructure as a service or even bare metal as depend on, on service provider needs and uh, demands we can use different EAS. On top of that, uh, we have to manage uh, the access layer and communication with other uh, services and, and platforms using either HTTP RESTful uh, uh, API or SS7 protocol like CAMEL, MAP, and so on, diameter, SIP, SMPP. And then we have services and we don't, we don't need any, any middleware here like, like uh, previously, Jainstly, SIP servers and so on. We can use frameworks like Akka or uh, Spring Boot to, to, uh, to implement service and use uh, Kubernetes to orchestrate those services. On top of that, we need uh, data layer either for session replication or persistent data using different uh, uh, applications and, and uh, uh, solutions like Hazelcast, Cockroach, Ceph for, for uh, block storage. So I wanted to, to make my part uh, extremely short because the, the, the most uh, uh, exciting part uh, will start right now. And uh, uh, so uh, we will move forward to demo part and Rafał, mic is yours. Thanks, Greg. So our demo will show uh, the steps needed for us to migrate from uh, virtual machines environment to cloud environment. Some of them will be a rede redesign slides as uh, as greg mentioned earlier uh, they will uh, be some kind presented uh, in a verbal way and other slides will be shown in practical way by uh, pavel by i mean some creation of the uh, kubernetes uh, kubernetes uh, and uh, other parts of our migration stuff so at the beginning we have a single instance application monolithic application hard to maintain one which is uh, very complex because it's not an easy stateless application but it uh, contains a lot of advanced mechanics mechanisms such as caching such as queuing uh, what's important the most uh, uh, it, 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 it is handling the integration with Telco protocols uh, such as SIP, MAP, SMPP diameter, uh, which is making them ready to co cooperate with 5G world uh, in cloud native in cloud native environment, which uh, is some kind of uh, stuff that uh, all um, service network functions providers were afraid of. Uh, and at the end, we want to uh, we want to achieve the distributed microservice oriented uh, system, uh, which is uh, which is uh, integrated with the Kubernetes stack. And please to the next slide. We will uh, make uh, our demo based on uh, one of our solutions, uh, which is uh, Ovo Messaging Gateway which is handling such functions as SMSC, IPSM gateway, SMS gateway. Uh, the reason why we selected it is because it has the greatest variety, greatest variety of uh, the, the integration with telco protocols. So SIP, uh, SMPP, MAP, uh, diameter with OCS and so on. And uh, it is some kind of replacement of uh, earlier uh, earlier uh, SMSCs uh, which uh, existed on the market, uh, which were non-distributed, which worked in a legacy NF or VNF way. So uh, when it comes to initial infrastructure, what we have right now? Uh, at, the, uh, at the bottom, we have the external infrastructure. So we have the layer of the client and at uh, the upper level, we have the, our local infrastructure, which is uh, what we have inside uh, inside our uh, virtual machines. So everything we have in uh, open OpenStack, as we have every uh, as we see uh, every uh, service is uh, laying on uh, the separate virtual machine. Also, 
uh, when it comes to services, they are monolithic. They handle logic, they handle, they handle API uh, within the single deployable units. They have a separate cache layer. They have a separate queuing layer. Uh, they have a separate connection points with, uh, with the clients, with uh, uh, SIP, MAP, SMPP diameter clients, which is very hard to maintain, which causes us the problems when we want to scale, in, scale up or scale down, or we want to change versions. It requires some uh, interven interventions, uh, not only from our side, but also from uh, external point of view. Uh, so, uh, also we have uh, the configuration uh, for we have uh, we, we have the uh, management uh, database which is uh, MySQL which is uh, very good for us. But when we want to move into the uh, cloud native, uh, when we want to move to cloud native environment, we want to have a distributed uh, database. And the step uh, number one, what we want to, what we will do here is to replace uh, the old, uh, old mechanism which uh, makes our system, uh, which make our system um, single, uh, single stated, and uh, separate when it comes to queuing, uh, and we want to make it shared, so and distributed. So we. Uh, we will use uh, Hazelcast for caching service, for caching of the state, for caching of the configuration management. Also, here we can use also Aerospike or Redis or, or any other distributed caching system that, uh, that one can in, in, um, imagine. Uh, also, for queuing layer, we, we are using Kafka uh, because it's uh, it, uh, it fits for us uh, in the best way, replaced, uh, replacing the old, uh, the old Java or other, uh, other, uh, other uh, queues. In the step number two, uh, when, we, when we have distributed service, we have uh, the problem also with the, pro with the fact that we have connected logic with the access layer so we will isolate the access layer uh, and we will we are building uh, the api gateways for each protocol separately uh, making them connect uh, directly to the client and leave all the internal uh, communication within the http so uh, now we have the situation when we want to uh, add the node or uh, remove the node, or we want to change the versions, uh, the client will not have any, uh, any awareness of this. So he is completely unaware of, and uh, agnostic when it comes to what's going inside our, uh, our infrastructure. And uh, this is uh, advantages for both of sides. In the step number three, uh, as I said earlier, we want to migrate from uh, MySQL to some kind of distributed database, which also handles uh, SQL. So our migration was not that hard, but also uh, to make uh, this database, to have this database to be uh, a transactional one. It is important for us that this distributed database will be a transactional because of requirements from many clients. That's why we chose to go with CockroachDB, which is one of the uh, databases also recommended by CLCF. Uh, it's uh, not only distributed, but uh, also easily horizontally scalable. Uh, it's fault tolerant and uh, it's, uh, when it comes to migration, we um, had some, uh, we, we didn't have any problems when it comes to access layer because the only thing to do was to uh, migrate the drivers and uh, make some minor uh, changes in SQL statements, but they, uh, they are uh, only because, uh, because 
the driver is changed from MySQL to PostgreSQL and uh, but these are only uh, minor small changes. Also, we had to uh, make a migration of the triggers to the application. For some deployments, it can be, uh, it can be however, a uh, very, very tricky part. For us, for our, it was not uh, the most crucial uh, thing. And now I'm passing the voice to Pavel, which is presenting how to build the Kubernetes cluster as a step number four. Uh, okay, so uh, first we need a Kubernetes cluster. Uh, our cluster contains uh, three master and uh, with etc. and three workers. Uh, for storage purposes and volume, we, we are using uh, Ceph. Uh, we, dev we deploy our uh, Kubernetes cluster on uh, OpenStack. Mm, so let's go to build the cluster. Uh, before a webinar, uh, I record uh, some view from uh, creation a cluster and uh, deploying a, a application on uh, Kubernetes. Uh, so we can start. Uh, we create a Kubernetes cluster using Uh, could you uh, go to the step four? Uh, okay, this video. Yeah, uh, first we create a cluster uh, on Rancher. Uh, type some name for the cluster. and uh, com uh, copy command run, uh, which we must run on uh, every node with uh, proper uh, prefix. Uh, to create virtual machine on OpenStack, we will hit with uh, cloud in it, and uh, we add command to run uh, after a machine will be ready. Of course, to uh, cloud in it and we uh, set proper parameter node role. Uh, now we provisioning a virtual machine on our uh, open stack. And after some time, uh, some time we have a ready uh, machine. Uh, this is the last machine, uh, worker number three. Mm. Uh, now we see on our OpenStack dashboard, we have uh, uh, six virtual machine, three master and uh, three worker. And uh, we see on our uh, rancher, we have a proper provision uh, Kubernetes cluster. Okay, next slide. Uh, okay, uh, as a seven protocol uh, using SCTP, so we uh, need enable in our uh, Kubernetes cluster because SCCP isn't default enabled in Kubernetes. Uh, uh, to add SCTP to our cluster, we go to Rancher, uh, we edit, uh, Cluster and and we add in Kubi API extra arcs future gate with SCTP support. Uh, 
uh, now our cluster is uh, updating and uh, after some time we have a, a working Kubernetes cluster with uh, SCTP. Uh, the standalone SIP stack and as a seven SDP layer uh, require adoption to proper expose uh, SIP and as a seven toward external infrastructure. Uh, minor SCTP um, update to establish uh, association uh, on node port and uh, as a seven layer above it is not impact. In a SIP stack, uh, there is a lot of changes in message uh, processing due to IP um, addresses and uh, port present in uh, different headers, like VR root. Uh, uh, this header marks contain uh, the uh, worker's IP address or VIP address. Uh, additional modification on, uh, are necessary to uh, achieve uh, redundancy and uh, load balancing. Uh, on our cluster, we install necessary component, uh, which is uh, Elastic Stack, uh, Cassandra, Kafka. Uh, to install open source uh, software, uh, we are using uh, Helm. And before that, we prepared uh, value, values proper. Now we, with Helm, we are installing a Kafka. Uh, we go to uh, Cassandra and we deploy uh, using Helm uh, Cassandra in a uh, messaging gateway namespace. And now we install elastic stack versus uh, file bit in uh, monitoring namespace. Uh, Elasticsearch, uh, also in monitoring namespace. And the last is uh, Kibana for see everything and also in uh, monitoring namespace. And we have a ready Kubernetes cluster with uh, open source sof software uh, installed uh, using Helm. Coming back to the logic services, uh, firstly, as they were uh, on a pure installed on a pure uh, virtual machines, there was no demand for them to be dockerized. But now, when we want to move to Kubernetes, we had to do it. We uh, created a Docker configuration uh, and Docker images for every service that we have, also for the API gateways. Uh, also, when it comes to our CI CD pipelines, they must have been reconfigured in order for them to be integrated with uh, our new Docker registries, our new doc a Kubernetes cluster. So now Jenkins was about to uh, build an image to push it to the uh, Docker registry and then deploy it to the Kubernetes cluster when only uh, needed. So uh, after that, uh, coming to the next uh, step. Hello. Uh, okay, so uh, I, I, I can't. Okay, I, uh, I the can't, config, okay. Uh, we create a config map. Uh, config map uh, allows uh, us to separate configuration 
uh, file from uh, image content. Uh, instead of uh, putting all the config uh, file inside, inside the image, uh, we create a config map. Uh, this example uh, show uh, config uh, as a seven uh, map gateway and uh, configuration uh, for messaging gateway. And coming back uh, to the Kubernetes configuration, now with that we have uh, our config maps, our uh, integration, our uh, Docker configuration. We are now ready to build our first YAML files to, uh, in order for our services to be properly uh, installed in a Kubernetes environment. Uh, in this, uh, in these files, we can uh, we can configure some kind of parameters needed for our service to be working properly. Some kinds, of, for example, the volume. Uh, our volume, volumes connections, open ports, and all the other features that are uh, provided uh, to us by Kubernetes and we want to use it. So, for example, the replication uh, scenarios, repli replica numbers, and so on. Uh, and uh, the last step um, is to actually create the application logic services and it, it will also be shown within uh, the uh, short uh, short uh, short film uh, okay now create a messaging gateway deployment uh, you can start the video give a second okay Okay, we are creating a messaging gateway uh, deployment in uh, messaging gateway uh, namespace, and we create a, a service for uh, that deployment. And we see we have a, a one pod with messaging gateway, which is running. And uh, we need to uh, have uh, three pods, so we change uh, the replica uh, count to three. Uh, we apply on uh, kubectl, and after, okay. So it shows that this is real. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, uh, after a couple of seconds, uh, we see we have a, a three replica count. And we achieve redundancy on messaging gateway. So that's it. I think uh, the, all, all the steps are uh, discussed. Now uh, I will summarize the technical part. Uh, so before the migration, what we had, what we had, we had a non-scalable, unmanageable monolith uh, with no shared state, uh, with not sh no shared queues. So the logic layer was not distributed at all. We had manual uh, rep MySQL replication master to slave, slave to master, uh, which was non-transactional, which uh, we had problems with, uh, with some kind of the synchronization and so on. Uh, we had the situation where each client had to adjust connection config after uh, our internal uh, infrastructure changes. Uh, also, virtual machines added resources utilization overhead, not only for our services, but also uh, for the operational and maintenance staff. So for Elastic, for, uh, for Prometheus and Grafana staff and so on. Uh, and we had to do manual deployment, manual scaling of the services. Actually, uh, the only thing what we uh, could have done was to automize it with some kind of Ansible stuff and so on. Uh, but uh, you know, this, 
this also uh, is a piece of code. This also had to have to be managed. This is not provided as the ready to go services uh, as uh, it is uh, being done right now with the Kubernetes environment and Kubernetes community and so on. And after the migration, after the migration, we have a logically simple architecture. We have uh, fault tolerancy for basically all of our services. What's most important for our logic services. Uh, when uh, some kinds of uh, disruptions uh, appear on our logic services, they will uh, they will be uh, restarted or the pods will be restarted and no uh, changes in configuration will be required from the uh, client side. We have a distributed uh, configuration DB. We have uh, no resource utilization when it comes to OS. We have um, also ready to go configuration from the vendors. Uh, that are giving us the uh, the OEM stuff, operation and maintenance. So for Elastic, for Logstash, for Kibana, Grafana, and Prometheus, and so on, for even Cockroach, we all have ready to go config uh, uh, recipes from the vendors. Within, we've also the Kubernetes uh, YAML files uh, to integrate. So we don't have to invent anything uh because this this integration with kubernetes is uh, pretty straightforward and managed by the vendor so no uh, no worries here what's most important for us and for the telco world, we uh, proved that uh, the integration with uh, the sometimes legacy telco protocols such as sip map smpp diameter is possible and can be done uh, with a little bit extra effort that we've managed to do uh, with, uh, in, within the Kubernetes environment also, with the Kubernetes network and so on. And coming back to the effects that we've made, these are the numbers only for our uh, migration. Uh, so these numbers can differ completely when it's uh, depending on the deployment uh, that you're running. But for our, for us, in a scenario where when, where we were running a, a campaign of SMSs with uh, 1,000 TPSs that are uh, affecting all of our services inside, we achieve which we achieve the visible numbers, the presented numbers uh, of the uh, reduction when it comes to uh, compute, compute, computation. Okay, so guys, uh, thanks a lot. Uh, in my opinion, it was it was excellent. So uh, I didn't see the full demo before, and uh, so I have to say that it was amazing. And uh, uh, as uh, we presented, uh, the, the the problem with uh, legacy deployments is like lack of service separation. Usually, for instance, even if you have SDP service delivery platform, you have many serv services running on the same uh, uh, platform, monolithing big uh, deployments, heavy regression testing. So this is something what uh, utilize huge amount of time resources from uh, uh, for, from vendor and, and uh, customer perspective, complicated deployment procedure. Uh, usually manual, uh, a lot of co coordination and so on, heavy acceptance tests, limited automatic scalability or even no automatic scalability. Usually it is manual, you have to buy either new hardware of, or software or license, whatever. And uh, thanks to using uh, cloud native uh, approach, uh, we can get rid of those, uh, those, those stuff. And, uh, and right now, uh, I wanted to, 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 to ask why, why, why to migrate to CNF and especially based on open source. Uh, first, from the technical perspective, um, we can uh, in, 
we can tailor to DevOps mode uh, where we have quick updates and uh, smooth updates, upgrades, uh, and we can even uh, upgrade piece of software and, uh, and, and also uh, something what wasn't uh, even possible and we couldn't imagine before, the well-known A-B uh, test uh, from web uh, work here can be applied as well. We can imagine that we can update just one one port and verify a small portion of traffic that it works and uh, so we are able to do that uh, out of the box automatic scalability and high availability and this is uh, something what gives us uh, kubernetes once we are able to uh, tailor legacy protocols and uh, squeeze our service to 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 be uh, implemented as a port uh, and uh, so we we can take advantages of such approach simplified automatic testing uh, um, configuration so we can use continuous integration continuous uh, delivery uh, pipelines and uh, apply automatic testing uh, there as well and as uh, Rafa mentioned, we have uh, rich operation maintenance tool set, uh, which, can, which we can use. We have ready to use configuration uh, and so on. Mm. On the business side, so definitely cost effectiveness and time to market. I know this is buzzword, but uh, we shown that and we proved that. Even I remember before we started uh, playing with with uh, Kubernetes, our engineers were a bit scared and they said, okay, it has to last a long time. We have to, to change our processes and so on. But at the end of the day, we see that it's, it's straightforward. Once you do that, it's uh, the next projects, next uh, services, it will be uh, really straightforward and uh, you can do that very quickly. Uh, no vendor lock-in. We are using a whole bunch of open source projects and we don't have to buy any royalty, any licenses. We can use community-driven uh, uh, projects. Uh, uh, no need to, to buy licenses or any subscription. Uh, so if you know how, what and how to use, uh, you can rule the world. Mm. And service providers, this is last but not least, can uh, contribute, even contribute to open source development community. And we have such examples, for instance, T-Mobile Poland, uh, which uh, were, was contributing to, uh, to ONF, uh, and they contribute to develop uh, EPC for, uh, for a use case, which were, is important for them. And they did it. And right now, this work can be used by others and other service providers, other, other uh, operators can reuse this work, add to some portion of uh, functionality. And this is uh, something what gives uh, advantages to the whole community. And last, because I did, we don't, you don't see here a clear statement without vendor lock-in. And let me come back to this picture. Mm. Uh, so as you see, let me use some uh, annotation, yes. So as you see, here we have monolithic applications. And, uh, and actually, uh, this is actually previously that the, the service was really monolithic. We, we added uh, whole operation maintenance stuff, we used OpenStack, uh, we 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 had automatization and so on, but it, but but still the application was monolithic, and we had here huge logic, and uh, the application was quite heavy. Mm, what we what we did, uh, we get we got rid. Uh, sorry, we removed. Uh, where is my pen? Uh, Oh, yes, we removed a uh, huge portion of functionality uh, like uh, we used Kubernetes, so means high availability, orchestration, automatic uh, scalability, uh, resilience. Uh, we added, uh, we used other protocol uh, projects for uh, session replication, uh, so we don't have to reimplement that. Uh, 
again uh, we used uh, open source project for a uh, database for storage uh, we are using as well ready to use patterns for deployment of uh, oper operation maintenance stack uh, here is some work needed to separate uh, legacy protocols and at the end of the day you are migrate you have to concentrate concentrated business logic which is just part of the solution and even if you if you say I don't want to to use OVO solution. I don't. I want to to use different solution. You can replace this part uh, um, as well. So this is something what what is important to mention that that uh, service provider operator has freedom and and uh, from our perspective we have to justify and show that we we are available uh, partner vendor. Uh, and uh, and we want to be as 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 good as possible to to provide the best solution. Okay, guys, uh, thanks a lot. Thanks a lot for that. Uh, it was pleasure to to uh, to present uh, our achievement, our solution. And right now we have time for Q and A. All right. Well, thank you very much, everyone, for that wonderful presentation. Um, we have about nine minutes for questions, so please feel free to drop them into the Q&A section. Um, with a reference to a VNF where a specific file for it um, with, has connection points, VDU, and virtual links, how are these components translated to CNF or in your implementation? Rafa? Uh... Trying to understand the question. Jarek, please can repeat because I also had some problems to understand uh, the, the root of this question. Uh... Sure. With reference to a VNF where a specific file for it um, has connection points, VDU and virtual links, how are these components translated to CNF or in your implementation? So maybe in, in general, because uh, I, I I'm not sure that I fully understand the question, but uh, but what we what what we we shown and we presented that uh, uh, virtual environment, uh, for instance, in in our case we are using OpenStack, so we can use uh, automatic deployment and uh, uh, and uh, in in our in in our case uh, Chef uh, for. Uh, for automatic deployment um, and we can use resources like computation memory uh, storage from virtualized environment and if we want to to migrate to different uh, virtualized environment uh, we have to repeat this work and use different uh, uh, automatization and deployment uh, patterns for instance for uh, um, for instance if you want to to, to migrate to to public cloud or, or VMware uh, based solution. In case of uh, uh, CNF, uh, so we are uh, providing this solution as a, as a solution which runs as pods in Kubernetes cluster. And nevertheless, where this Kubernetes cluster runs, uh, we can uh, use the same uh, deployment patterns. I hope so that I replied to, to these questions uh, in right away. He added a little more specification um, uh, for, the, for the question. Um, for a specification file, which, have, which has Tosca templates for the VNF. Ah, okay, okay. Uh, because uh, Pavel, maybe this is a question for you. Because in case of uh, VNF, we are using Chef. Uh, am, am I right? Uh, in VNF, we are using we are using Heat and ah, sorry, uh, Heat. Uh, <laughs> sorry, Heat template. Uh, yeah, and 
we create a, a template file for, uh, for example, for bookkeeper, uh, for instance, for uh, network and for tenant and uh, for all that stuff. And uh, in this uh, case, in our OpenStack uh, uh, Kubernetes cluster, uh, we are using this tool uh, to create a virtual machine uh, uh, and our Kubernetes cluster is put on this virtual machine. Uh, the, the VNF uh, template file uh, are using to uh, create an instance needed to create a cluster. Okay. Do you have any use cases of migration to CNF in OSS telecom domains? Uh, so this uh, this example is for uh, real time uh, uh, service and messaging gateway is uh, example of that. The other example which we have and we didn't mention is is uh, OCS. We have our OCS online charging system migrated to CNF as well. Um, so we are not OSS provider. So uh, we are the, rather concentrate at at real time. Uh, uh, use cases like like prepaid, uh, like like uh, MMTL, OCS, and so on. Okay, where can we get support for a CNF deployment? Mm, support uh, like f you can get from OVO because uh, so ah. Uh, Thanks, Jerry. This is this is quite a really important question because so we can cook and prepare prepare the best delicious uh, uh, dish uh, from from open source projects, uh, and of course everyone can do that. There is no restriction for that. But uh, but what what OVO can give and other vendors who are who knows how to do that, we can provide SLA. Mm, and full responsibility. So we can give you five nines and uh, career grade SLA for support of the solution. And so this is a value added uh, of such uh, companies like, like OVO. Okay. Do we have any other questions at all? Anyone? We have about three minutes left. Is it possible to deploy a CVNF directly on OpenStack with Kubernetes integrated instead of a VM? Yeah, this is actually the, the, the example. Let me come back to, to this slide. Uh, maybe it's not shown here, uh, but actually in our lab, we have OpenStack and we have few Kubernetes clusters, and uh, one of the cluster contains uh, messaging gateways. So, so this is the, the deployment uh, which we selected. Uh, depend on on the needs and use cases you, you, which you'd like to achieve. Um, we can recommend uh, deployment Kubernetes at OpenStack or bare metal. Bare metal and at at OpenStack is is or or is. Uh, we can uh, decide to select the solution if you want to have flexibility. At bare metal, if you want to have efficiency, for instance, EPC gateway, like P gateway, uh, should should run on uh, bare metal because we need uh, uh, we need efficiency and uh, we can be as close. We have to be as close as possible to CPU. Okay. Do we have any other questions at all? We have less than a minute left. When there are multiple v VIM, say a VNF deployed as a VM on OpenStack and others as CVNF on Kubernetes, can we make a NS out of it? Mm, NS. Uh, 
What do you mean? Network service. Uh, network service. Uh, Pavel? I don't understand this question at all. Okay. Jerry, can you, can you repeat uh, or rephrase uh, the question? Yeah, sure. When there are multiple VIM, say a VNF deployed as a VM on OpenStack and others as CVNF on Kubernetes, can we make a network service out of it? Uh, on our uh, OpenStack, we are using only a uh, network service and uh, uh, our clusters communication, uh, are communicating on this uh, network and, and that's it. Because not sure, uh, again, from my perspective, I also not sure that I understand the uh, question right uh, in right way, but as uh, as Pavel uh, presented uh, or here, uh, we have OpenStack, and we are using uh, uh, virtual uh, VMs provided by OpenStack to to deploy workers and masters, and and we are using uh, Ceph for storage, and what uh, service we are using for networking, Pavel here. Uh, for networking here, we are using uh, Flannel. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, so this works as and such. Our OpenStack is using Neutron and our cluster is using Flannel. And we also, we also can use Scanner or a different network provider to our Kubernetes cluster. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, thank you all for a wonderful presentation um, and for a great Q&A session. That's all the time um, we have for today's presentation. Uh, today's webinar will be available later today on the CNCF webinar page at cncf.io slash webinars. Thank you to our presenters and to all of you for joining us today. Everyone take care and we will see you all next time. Okay. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure to, to present. Thank you. Having you all. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.